ministries. We're glad you're looking in. We're glad you're joining us. The Holy Spirit is here. The anointing is here. And we're about to dig into the Word of God. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you for this morning. We praise you for the anointing that has been flowing in here all morning through our Bible study and now in this, in this time together. It is a time of praise and worship. Thank you for the anointing that flowed through. And now we ask that the Holy Spirit, you flow through the word of God this morning. Flow that word into our hearts, into our minds, that not only do we hear it, but we hear it. We hear it with a new, new, new sound. We hear it from a new voice. We hear it from on high. And that word penetrates our heart. And we're able to hang on to it, live by it, and praise you for it to receive our victories. Thank you, Holy Spirit, as you enlighten us this morning with the truth of the word. And we praise you and give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles to Acts chapter 3. Back in October. I received a word of the Lord for 2023, and he said to go review that, and then he said to mention that here today. So 2023 will begin the restoration of all things. Everything that Satan has been allowed to steal must be returned and restored, and that begins now. Yeah. And in Acts 9, uh, chapter 3, verse 19, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Well, I don't know about you, I've been refreshed this morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, and look at verse 21, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So if we're in that time of restitution, then it's got to be pretty close <laughs> For Jesus to be released from heaven. You try that over here. <laughs> if we're in the time of restitution, then we've got to be pretty close to the time when heaven releases Jesus to come and take the church home. Amen. 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 That's exciting. Now, that doesn't mean that Satan is going to just sit back and say, oh, well, God said it. I'm going to let it happen because I can't do anything about it. See, he still thinks he's going to take his throne above God. Have you ever heard of anybody so foolish? <laughs> but he hangs on to that foolishness. Now, I want you to go over to Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to go quickly through a few things here because there's a there's a place I've got to get this morning in this uh, old message. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 30. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, if a thief be found, the thief shall restore sevenfold. The thief shall give all the substance of that thief's house. Now just take a moment and think, not just from yourself, but how much Satan has stolen 
through the years from people all over the world. But now it's a time of restitution, and it's time for him to pay it back. Pay it back. Not just give what he stole, but sevenfold. Sevenfold is a large number. All right? So he's got to return everything that he has stolen. Yeah. So if you've got grandparents and great grandparents or even mothers and fathers and whatever is stolen from you, you have a right to receive it back right now, sevenfold. Amen. Amen. Everything. Now, how do we do that? Well, we've got to put the pressure on Satan to do what he needs to do here. He's not going to do it willingly. Do you understand that? Right. So we've got to put pressure on him. And, and we've really got to take it back. Because it is the word of God. All right? Now, Luke 6.48 from the message. If you work the words into your life. Let me say that again. If you work the words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who dug deep and laid the foundation of his house on bedrock. When the river burst its banks and crashed against the house, nothing could shake it. It was built to last. Let me ask you a question this morning. First of all, you do know you're the temple of the living God. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right? But is your temple built to last? Is your temple built, built to last? Because, see, Satan is going to try and bring every storm he can probably bring in, into your life to see if he can knock your temple down. Are we going to let him? No. See, it's our choice. If you work the words of God into your life, Hebrews 11.3 from the same message, by faith we see the world called into existence by God's word. Amen. We see God throughout the Bible using his faith. Especially through Genesis. God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, and every time God said, he saw. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And then he looked at it and he said it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. Then when he looked at the whole picture and the whole thing of what he had done, it was very good. All right? I personally believe it's time for us to get the church into a position to act like God. Oh, listen to that. Yeah. What are you? I think it's time we start to get over into true Christianity. Wow. Do you know that the apostles and the disciples of Jesus Christ who walked with them? They were first called Christians at Antioch. And I've read that account. Because when I read it, I thought, okay, these people saw something in them and saw something from them that caused them to call these people Christians. Yeah. What did they see? What Christ did, they did. They did. Amen. Oh, uh, there was healings that went on. Yeah. There were deliverances that went on. This wasn't a weak bunch. They went out there and confronted the devil and put it to flight. And we need to do the same thing. Amen. Two things here. 
If you work the words into your life, and by faith we see the world called into existence by God's word. So we not only have to work the words of God into our life, we have to work those words by faith. Right. By faith. So we need to know some things about the word of God. And the Bible talks about us going from milk to meat. All right? I mean, think about, and, and Brother Hagin had, had a tremendous teaching on this that he called spiritual growth, likening and, and comparing spiritual growth to natural growth. It was excellent. Folks, we get people into the church, we get them born again, what do we do with them? We, we've got a few mothers here this morning. When you, when you brought that baby home, did you just take it and throw it in the middle of the floor and say, there, now take care of yourself? <laughs> no. You got prepared for that baby. Amen. I mean, I remember Lynn and I, I thought, holy smokes, one baby and we've got to have all this stuff? I, I, had a, I had a 1967 Mustang at the time. I really liked that car. Oh, it was nice. We had a baby. I had to get rid of that car because it was too small just for one baby and what we had to take with us. We had to put a whole room in our place full of stuff for that baby. And here's the point. Are we prepared right now for what's coming through that door? Now see, they're going to come in and they don't know what we know. They're going to need to be fed the milk. You know, you had to go and you had to get those bottles and you had to get that milk right or whatever and you know, feed them and change them and love them and all that. Folks, we're going to have to help these people when they come in. We're going to have to help them change. Hello. Amen. Amen. Shop, that's good preaching, preacher. Yeah. <laughs> preacher. Preach it, brother. But here's the point, folks. We can't give them any more than what we've got. Right. Turn over to the book of Hebrews. And the fifth chapter. Hebrews chapter 5. Let's start with verse 8. Hebrews 5 and 8. Though Jesus were a son, yet learned Jesus obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, that scripture has been used a lot in the church, but it's been misused. Because Jesus didn't really, in, in the term that a lot of times we use the word suffering as being pain and anguish and trouble and hardships and all this. Jesus didn't suffer any of that until he laid his life down for you and I. So what is it then that he suffered? Well, let me define that word. By the things he suffered, by the things he experienced, this word in this particular verse means he experienced something. Jesus experienced the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. All right? And then what he did was he got obedient to the anointing. I mean, how many of you this morning in the praise and worships that was in this place experienced the anointing. 
you know, those heads going over reluctantly, about half. Praise the Lord. Folks, I'm going to tell you, the anointing was here this morning. And it is here. Amen. It flowed in in that, in that praise and worship. It's an experience. But then the anointing begins to flow. What is it doing? That praise and worship and the anointing is preparing us for the Word of God. The Word has to be planted. Now watch this. Let me stop there. Thank you, Lord. What did Jesus learn obedience through? Well, how about his prayer and his fellowship? And his worship to the Father. Yeah. Hmm? How about his ability to understand and gain God's wisdom and knowledge? Oh, but well, Brother Jerry, this is Jesus. Yes, and we got to understand something. He came here as a man. He left everything he had in heaven there and came here as a man who was born of God. Amen. Well, what are you and I, folks? We are men born of God. Amen. Same thing. Which means when we have the Holy Spirit in us, we've got everything Jesus had in him in us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He was a student of the Word. And all he had, Chris, was the Old Covenant. We got a new covenant, a better covenant to lead, to guide us. Yes. Woo, glory. All right. Back. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, let me stop here for a moment. Christian, Christ like. So if we're Christ-like, see, there was a point where he had a calling that was all his own, but all the rest of his calling is the same for us. You shot him into that. We don't have to go to that cross. Right. Amen. Amen. We don't have to wear a crown of thorns. We don't have to have our back slashed open. No. We don't have to go to hell. Amen. We don't have to spend one second there. Thank you, Lord. Why? He was our substitute in all that. He did all that. Everything he did prior to that was to show us what we're to do after he goes and is resurrected from hell, spending his life so that you and I can have a more abundant life. Yes. Amen. Now, of whom, oh, look at verse 11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. Now, my prayer this morning, as, as I was meditating all through this week on this, I just kept saying, God, that verse of Scripture, I pray, does not fit the people of Oasis of Life Ministry. Yes, amen. That you are able to say whatever you have to say, because we are not dull of hearing. Uh -huh. We are ready to hear what you've got to say. Yes. Amen. amen. For... When for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which is the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. I was thinking, for those of you who were in the class this morning, I was thinking during that class, man, that and what's coming forth from Brother Copeland and Brother Moore, that is meat. Right. And I'm going to tell you, that's strong in me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I was sitting there thinking, I wonder how much of the church could really handle what those two were teaching in that class this morning. 
I should hope more than I think. But I'm looking at this right here, folks. Are we ready to move on from the milk to the strong meat? You know, you bring a baby home from the hospital, you don't cut, cut up a nice steak for that baby or cook up a nice steak for that baby. You give them milk for quite some time. Right. Then you give them some strained vegetables and all that kind of stuff. Pea soup. <laughs> and then you have people who sit in the back. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't hear that out there. <laughs> yeah. Mom feeds you stuff she thinks you ought to have. Oh. Hallelujah. I said, Mom feeds you things you ought to have. Right. <laughs> and maybe you don't like all of it. But it's good for you. And sometimes the Word of God can, it, it can stir in there. Just, ooh. You know? You know what I'm talking about? When the Bible says you need to be cleansed. Right. Ooh. You like it, I can tell. I'll move on. Verse 13, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the work of righteousness. For he is a man. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We look at the world today, and we would have to admit the world doesn't know the difference between good and evil. Right? Yeah. But how about the church? Hmm? Does the church know the difference between good and evil? No. Does the church know the difference between a blessing and a curse? See, God is in the blessing business. The devil's in the cursing business. Yeah. Do we know the difference? I don't know about you. I'd rather be blessed. Yeah. I've been redeemed from the curse. It shouldn't have any. It, it, it shouldn't touch me. It shouldn't touch you. And we got to get the church in a position where that's true, where it doesn't touch us. James said there's a position in James chapter 5, he said, or 1 John, John said it. He said, there's a position we can take where the devil cannot touch us. Yeah. And a lot of people, oh yes, when we get to heaven, boy. No, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Have you read the four Gospels? Show me in those Gospels where Jesus was touched by the devil. We, we had a men's breakfast yesterday that we went to, and there was a fellow sitting across from me, and I didn't expect to get into this, Rob. Rob was sitting right next to me. But I spent the whole breakfast preaching, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. yeah. To a very hungry young man. Amen. He was hungry. Mm -hmm. I was amazed at how much he didn't know. But I fed him. It came down to the fact that that was more important than the food I had on my plate was to feed this young man the word of God. And it just came up in me. It just kept rolling and rolling. And as long as he had ears to hear, I was ready to give it to him. Right. Feed him. But I had to be really aware of what I was feeding him and most of what I was feeding, and I'm sitting there listening to the Rob. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. But then I asked him a question. Rob answered the question. <laughs> I asked him another question, and he's sitting there looking at me. Rob answered the question. <laughs> I and listen I thought, in church. What's that? <laughs> I listen in church. There you go. That's, I think I even said that. Yes. So, man, he goes to a good church. That <laughs> point, yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> But I 
look at it from this the standpoint, that young man couldn't take the meat. Rock could. Right. So I had to feed that man milk. It's a young man. And I know the seed of the word of God that was put out yesterday was is now being developed in that man's heart. Amen. I want to believe it has given him an urge and a desire to get into the word and find out if those things I gave him were true. All right, now, let's define this. Milk, what is it? Basics. Milk is the basics and the principles of the word, the foundation. Meat is when we dig deeper to get a greater revelation and build our faith. So when we look at this, we've got to understand something. What is the purpose for God's word? Now, what is the purpose of that book that's sitting in your lap right now? Let's go to the Gospel of John. Hope your neighbor tell him, I believe he's going someplace this morning. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. So all things were made by God and by his word. Right. And without God, without his word, was not anything made that was made. Amen? Yeah. Amen. In God and in his word. If God and his word are one, then whatever this says about God, it's saying it about his word. So in God and in his word was life. And the life was the light of men. The life that God is providing for us is the revelation that we need in the milk. Yeah. And that light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Now, what, what are we seeing here? In the book of Luke, Luke chapter 4 Jesus preached the message on the spirit of the Lord is upon me he has anointed me right and some of them got upset and you know the story walked through the crowd and, and then he, he is preaching to another group here and this group is sitting there and they're looking at each other and here's what they said in Luke 4.32 his Words are with power. See, we can preach the word, but are we preaching it with power? And as I was studying this and meditating on this throughout the week and this morning, I thought back and God took me back. I, I believe God took me back to this time. I received a call from a pastor and he said, I, I've got a special series of meetings coming up. We're going to do a Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. And he says, I know you can't be there Sunday morning. You've got your own church there. But he said, Would you come Friday night and open these meetings? with a scripture and prayer. And he told me who was coming. And I'd never heard of the man. He says, the man, his name was Gary Wood. I said, okay, I, I'll, let me see what God wants to do here. I'll call you back in a little bit. And uh, I went and talked to my daughter. I said, this, this guy got the name of Gary Wood coming. Have you heard of him? She said, no. So we looked him up on the computer and found out he was a man who... Uh, when he was 19 years old, in an automobile accident, and died and went to heaven. And his sister was over the body lying on the road and crying out to God to bring him back. Well, he was in heaven for a while, got a tour of heaven, and then was sent back into his body because God had to honor his sister's faith, that man's sister's faith. I thought, well, okay, that, that, 
we had a lady here a while back. Her name was Mary Baxter. Maybe some of you have heard of her read her book. She was here. Well, we had some good crowds. We had tremendous services. She was here with us for a week. And uh, I am convinced that lady definitely has visited heaven and hell. And everything she had said was, was on target. So I thought, okay, we'll go. I called Pastor Max and I would go. I would come and you know, open the services for you if that's what you want with a scripture and prayer. And so we went and we walked in the door of the church and we're walking down the, uh, there's an aisle there to that church and then you go into the sanctuary and we're walking by this guy, this guy standing there, I didn't know who it was, but we're walking by him and the guy says, sir, can I talk to you for a minute? Said, okay, so I went over and I had no clue who it was. He introduced himself, I'm Gary Wood. I said, okay, I'm Jerry Lawrence. He says, you're a pastor. I said, yes, sir. He says, you're also a prophet. I said, yes, sir. He says, I would like to talk to you after the service because God just spoke something to me. He said, throughout this service, I'm going to get a word that I need to deliver to you. I said, okay. So I, we went and sat down. And this is kind of funny because Janelle and I were there. We were sitting on the end. And he came in. And Janelle poked me. She said, Dad, he's okay. I said, how do you know that? She said, he's carrying a Kenneth Bo Copeland Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so it came time for me to go up. And I'm telling this for a purpose. And I went up and I stood up front. And I read the scripture. I didn't know what the man was going to preach on. I figured he was going to give us his testimony which he did, but I didn't know what he was going to preach on the whole week, the whole sessions there that weekend. I read Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And then I prayed. And I'm telling you, it started to pour in that church. The rain of the anointing just poured in. I went and sat down and had praise and worship. And then he introduced Brother Wood, and he came up. And he looked at me, and he said, thank you, sir. He said, thank you for ushering in the anointing. And I was thinking about that this week. Folks, that place was packed. It was some 300 people in here that night. And when it came time, he gave one altar call for those to come up and be born again, and there were several. Then he gave up another, he gave another call for those to come up and be baptized in the Holy Ghost, and there were a few of those. Then he called for healing. If you need healing in your body, I mean to tell you, there wasn't but 50 people left in their seat. They were packed in their building. You know that church in Centerburg. Can you picture this? They were packed up in the front, several layers deep, down the middle aisle and down the sides. People coming up to be healed. And Brother Wood got up there and he says, I, he says, I need help. And Brother Jerry, would you help? So I started at the back. He started at the front. We just went through laying hands on people. I mean, it looked like a war zone in that place. People all over the floor. But there were people being healed. Yes. There was one fella, and when I was coming up in the back, and he looked at me, he says, I don't know why I'm standing here. And he says, I've got a heart disease, but I deserve to have it. I said, what are you talking about me deserve it? He says, I haven't been very good with God. I said, okay, let's get you to a place where we can get you to repent and get your heart healed. So I let him in a repentance type thing. And oh, the refreshing it came. And then I laid hands on him. And as I went to lay hands on him, his wife was standing there. She said, Pastor, you, you can't do that. His heart is weak. She says, I've seen people and I'm watching and people are falling out. And he can't do that. I said, you, you, you hold up. Let me do something first. So I laid hands on her, 
calling for the peace of God, and she fell on the floor, so we didn't have a problem with her anymore. <laughs> I laid hands on him, and he went out. I mean, Rose, you laid hands on Rose, she's out. I think he beat your timing, Rose. <laughs> See, now you got something to push for. <laughs> he went out in the spirit. Uh, we went and prayed for some mothers, and he got up by himself, yes. and he come running down that aisle, grabbed me and hugged me. He says, I know, I know, I know my heart is healed. He says, I'm doing good. I says, he said, I think I could run around this building right now. I said, if you feel like that's what God's doing in you, you do it. He did. He started running around the building. I want that back. Amen. Amen. I want that power of God back in this church right here Amen. where it should be, where we start seeing things Amen. happening instead of constantly living in hope. Yeah. You hear this one? Yeah. Now, what we have here, we find out in the Word, my goodness. The covenant word of God gives us life. It gives us revelation of who God is. It gives us revelation how God operates. But it also gives us a revelation of how we are to operate in the kingdom of God. And the word gives us the ability, verse 5, to overcome darkness. Colossians 1.13, I was going to bring this up in the class this morning. Boy, I, I think we could have spent another couple hours in that class this morning without that tonight. Yeah. It was so good. Colossians 1.13 says we have been delivered, already been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son, which is the kingdom of light. We got to enforce this. Satan's trying to convince us that didn't happen and nothing else happened. But it did. Sure did. Amen. Yeah. And then Isaiah 2, we sang that, that Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2, we sang and 3, we sang that this morning. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. We got to let God's light shine through us, the revelation that he's given us. Let it shine. 1 John 5, 4 says this, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Now notice it didn't say, Larry called me, uh, what was that, maybe a couple of months ago, I think he was out doing his job, and in between delivering papers once in a while, he'd call me while he's driving. And he said, Pastor, I, I was thinking about that verse, and I said, good, thinking is a good thing. Hmm. And he said, the verse doesn't say whosoever, it says whatsoever. I said, okay. And I listened to him, and he had some good points, and hung up, and I sat back and I started thinking about it. Whatsoever is born of God, well, I'm born of God. So that makes me a whatsoever. Wait a minute. Is the word of God born again in me? No. It is the word of God being birthed in me as the whatsoever to overcome the world? How much faith do I have in the word of God to overcome the world's situation right now? It's bad out there, have you noticed? But yet, the Bible tells me that I can tell and you that we can overcome how bad it is out there with the good that God has put in here. This good thing called the Word of God and faith coupled together when we decide to do what the Bible says and work those words into our life to produce what God's word says they would. Yes. Now, I want you to go over to Isaiah. Oh, this is where I've been trying to get. So we got here. Amen. Hope you never tell them we're there. Amen. For today, anyway. 
Isaiah chapter 55. Yes, sir. Let me start with 54. Verse 7. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. How many weapons of Satan are supposed to prosper against you? Absolutely none. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And watch this. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall contemn. So the tongue becomes a weapon. The tongue becomes a weapon. So any tongue or any weapon that comes up against us, we are to condemn. We are to set up a powerful opposition to that weapon of Satan and stop it from prospering. Now listen to this. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the righteousness is of me, saying the Lord. This is our heritage. For you and I have to have the power of God in us and the word of God under that power to stop any weapon Satan can come up with. You still all here this morning? Okay, so. Ho! Everyone that thirsts, come ye to me. Come ye to the waters. And he that has the money, come ye to buy and eat. Yea, come by wine and milk without money and without price. Okay. Somebody asked me one time, how do you buy something around here without money? Well, in God's kingdom, it isn't money. It's called faith. Amen. Amen. But look at how he describes the waters in here. Waters, a lot of times, is described as word, as the word of God. Milk is described as the word of God. And the wine rep represents the new birth experience and how you grow in that experience. So he's saying, come by this because you can't get the new birth without the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes, if you would, by the word of God. Amen? Yeah. So now we're supposed to come to where the waters are. And, and I got to thinking about this. Waters. Water, water must flow or it becomes stagnant. And as I was sitting here this morning, I was thinking about that. And so I went and asked Josh to look this up in his, in his uh, dictionary that he has on the phone. What about this word stat, static or stagnant? Stagnant means not active. But then he came back and he said, and when I got back in there, he said, no, wait a minute. He said, I found another definition here. Stagnant means no development, no growth. So if water becomes stagnant, it has no development, no growth. So if the water is the word of God and it's preached and it's left to become stagnant within us, there's no development, no growth. Okay? Verse 2. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfies not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Fatness in the word of God represents the anointing. Okay? So we're to delight in the anointing. Verse 3. Here's how we buy this, 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 the wine and the milk. 
without money. Incline your ear, come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Oh, that hit me. I'm telling you, it hit me. The sure mercies of David. David made a lot of mistakes as the king, even before he was the king. But he made a lot of mistakes as the king. And as the king, every time he made a mistake, he got before God and repented. And God gave him the forgiveness. That's the sure mercies of God. God says, whatever you have done, I'm a forgiving God. And I'm here to start it all over for you. Then the slate will be wiped clean. You'll be all brand new and go. That's the line, folks. Is a constant state of being aware. If I messed up, God's there to help me clean it up. Amen. Drop down to verse 6. six. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he was near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Every time we commit a sin, I wrote this down, we start the death process. Say that again. Every time we commit a sin, born again or not, we start the death process. But every time we repent, we restore and restart the life, life process. Hallelujah. Every time we repent, we restore and start the life process. Verse 8. God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your say, ways, saith the Lord. For as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. What God is trying to say here, he's not running an ego trip. He's saying, come up to my level. Come up to my level. Remember, we read a couple of weeks ago that Jesus thought it not equal, not uh, wrong to be equal with God. See, we can't think like God. Yes, we can. And we can put into motion the way God acted when he looked at the chaos that was in the word, world. And instead of saying, oh my, oh, it's dark out there. What did he say? Let there be light. Oh, and the next word was, light was. So whatever darkness is entering into your world right now, into your life, you can look at it and say, uh-uh, I'm going to release the light of the word of God and the revelation that God has given me, and I'm going to put that darkness to flight in my life, in my family's life, in my country's life, in my church's life. I've got the ability inside me to do that because I can think like God and act like God. Yes, yes. And I can get God's results. Yes. Amen. Whew, my, my, my. And then give him the glory. Can I finish this up? What? Verse 10. Now, listen closely. Are you there? Yes. For as the rain comes down on the snow from heaven and returns not thither, but waters the earth, makes it, and makes it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. So shall my word be. In other words, God is saying, my word is just like that. It gives seed. Luke 8, 11 says, the parable is this, the word of God is the seed. Or the seed is the word of God. Right. Amen? Amen? The seed is the word of God. But it's also bread to the eater. Your spirit man needs fed. 
How do we feed the spirit man? The word of God. Oh, I'm telling you, folks. <laughs> oh, Lord. Two things have been going on in the church. Hopefully not this one, but going on in the church. They've been fed one or two things, for the most part. Poison or sweets. And sweets can be just as poisonous to your body as poison. Sweets. You come to church and have dessert. Now, Lynn, she likes to have her dessert before the meal. <laughs> That's all right. She does eat her meal, but she likes the dessert first. But most of us, that's the way we are with the spiritual walk. We want the dessert. Give us the dessert. Give us the dessert. Give us the sweets. Give us the sugar stuff. And then there's poison in itself. It's got the poison. What we need is the meat. Okay, I'll give myself, myself an amen right there <laughs> since I didn't get one. Yeah. What we need is the meat. Meat is where we grow. Now, now stay with us. I'll, I'll finish this up right here. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall not return unto me. This is God talking to you and I. It will not turn to me without, with empty and without power. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper where to I said it. Where did God send his word? Into the heart, the very soul, the very spirit of man. That's where he said his word. And he said that word is to prosper in you. Now watch the results here, folks. You shall go out with joy. Be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Verse 13. This is where I've been trying to get this morning, and I'll finish up right here. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. I went and I looked up a fir tree. What is God talking about? I mean, instead of thorns. How many want thorns and briars in your life? Nobody. Okay, good. Then we're talking to the right crowd. But instead of the thorns, shall come up the fir tree. I looked up the fir tree. The word fir means lance or sword. So instead of these thorns that are coming up in our life, we're going to have a sword or a lance that comes. Those needles that grow out of a fir tree grow right out of the branch, folks. Are you here this morning? We're having some meat for dinner right now. Those needles grow out of the branch and they give that fir tree stability and protection. What does the Bible tell us? That when we come at Satan, come at him with the sword of the spirit. That sort of spirit is growing out of us from the word of God. But oh, I like this one. The myrtle tree. Instead of briars. The myrtle tree. Dense leaves that hide the branches. Those leaves are fertile. And according to Revelation chapter 22... Leaves represent the healing for the nations. In other words, any type of healing. So the myrtle tree grows these leaves and covers and protects the branches 
from sickness, disease, lack, poverty, oppression, depression. The devil can't break through those thick leaves if we'll let them grow. Hallelujah. Glory. That's what God's talking about. Take my word and do with my word what I do. And bring all that together so that you are coming out in joy and in peace. Oh, no. Woo, glory. That's shouting ground. Amen. Stand your feet and shout a little bit. Hallelujah. 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 You have hope too. We can't see you there, so you're shouting. You're all right. You can dance around the room. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Praise you, Father. Say this with me. I believe. I believe. God's Word. God's Word. I have faith. I have faith. In God. In God. And in God's Word. And in God's Word. And I'm going to take my tree. And I'm going to turn it into a a fir tree. Fir tree. And a myrtle tree. And a myrtle tree. I'm going to grow that lance. I'm going to grow that lance. Sharp and strong. Sharp and strong. And I'm going to grow my leaves. And I'm grow my leaves. And when I do. And when I do. Satan can't touch me. Satan can't touch me. Woo, Lord, do you believe that? Hallelujah. Well, I'll give the Lord a shout of praise today. We're so glad you joined us. We call for God's blessing to come into your houses, your cars, wherever you're at right now, and bless you, empower you to have a successful week. We love you. We hope to see you next week, Resurrection Sunday. Somebody asked me about Easter. I said, what's that? <laughs> it's Resurrection Sunday. We'll celebrate the resurrected life of Jesus Christ right here. And we're going to do it with a communion service as well. So join us next week. We love you. God bless you. Nelson, what do you got?